point. So hang on one sec second. Always escapes me where it goes. I am hoping that you can now see my screen. Um, and this evening I'm going to be talking about, Laura, can you text me and tell me? Yep, so we actually see your Microsoft Teams, not the PowerPoint. How very bizarre. Okay, hang on. I'm going to unshare for a minute, um, locate this goodie. Ain't technology grand. Are you seeing it now, Laura? Uh, no, we are not. Do you want me to pull it up and try and share it? Uh, no, let me, because I made some edits, so let me, I'm not seeing it in my tray, which is the problem, why I, I'm having trouble. No, I don't want that one, dismiss that one. Hang on with me, folks, one second. I had it up before, so. Success. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Woo, there. Okay, um, again, welcome to our open house. Uh, this is the second one we've done this open enrollment season, um, and we're very happy to talk to new parents. As I said, my name is Rosalind Thompson, and I will be um, sort of shepherding both campuses for a while, so um, I'll be able to answer any of your questions questions. So we opened Basis Austin Primary in August of this year, August 17th. We have been um, up to through October. We were doing 100% virtual. Uh, starting in October, we opened the school for uh, what we call Families Choose, which meant that families could choose to either come, uh, come into the building and do in-person school or continue um, with online learning. And we will do that with every grading period this year. Um, we just announced uh, just this week, our second campus, Basis Austin. Um, and that address uh, is 1605 Kramer Lane, 1605 Kramer Lane. It's just about 4.1 miles from the Dartmouth campus. So um, families will, will, it'll be pretty easy for them to have kids on both campuses. Uh, next year, Basis Austin Primary will serve K2 and Basis Austin is accepting applications grades three through seven. Our rising uh, third graders from Basis Austin will transfer to uh, from basis austin primary will transfer to basis austin so who are we and what is this uh basis charter schools so we are open enrollment uh, meaning that anybody can apply we are tuition free we are a public charter school um, we welcome all. There is no admissions test. There is no, nothing 
that um, any one of you can do to get in except to apply. Uh, we do run a lottery in January um, because we typically have more applications than we have seats, um, but then we put folks on a wait list and um, there's always possibilities that you will um, get in. We are very much academically accelerated. Uh, particularly in the primary grades, we teach at least a year ahead, meaning that our kindergarten um, uh, curriculum is a first grade curriculum, our first grade curriculum is a second grade curriculum, et cetera. We are all about college prep. And as you'll see in the um, presentation, we are very high performing and we are top ranked in state and national rankings and in fact, get a lot of interest and press from um, the global world. So that's who we are in a nutshell. Our mission is pretty simple. We want to empower students to be able to achieve at globally competitive le levels. We have a transformative K-12 academic program that we are never satisfied with. We are always being uh, challenging ourselves and being innovative in our curriculum. Currently, there are 29 charter schools across the United States, uh, basis charter schools. We started in Tucson, Arizona, 22 years ago. So Arizona is kind of our home and we have 22 schools in Arizona. We have one in Louisiana and next year we'll add another in Louisiana. Uh, we currently have five in Texas, and we will add another next year to make six. And we have one um, great campus in Washington, D.C., down near the Naval Memorial, if you're familiar with D.C. We've had extraordinary growth. Again, in 1998, we started the first school in the basement of a synagogue um, with 56 students. The interesting thing about that is that several of those 56 students are still with basis, either in our corporate offices or as teachers. And then we started to grow uh, within five years. And as you can see by this chart, we have grown tremendously with the 29 schools now serving over 20,000 students. So what's behind all this? What's, what are the driving forces? So th there really are four things. Our curriculum, our teachers, how we support students, and our school culture. Uh, let's start with the curriculum. As I said, we are constantly innovating. We have a whole division that is responsible for our curriculum, but we also hear from our teachers and we hear how kids learn best, what they want to learn, what they excel at, and then we, we develop new programs. Um, once we get to the high school, we are very much AP. Uh, we want our kids to be able to go to college with some college credit and being fully, fully prepared and having mastered many of the subjects that um, they have taken uh, throughout their years. We say that we are a liberal arts school with a STEM focus, but we believe in the liberal arts and we believe in the fine arts. And so our kids all from kindergarten through 12th grade um, have a good selection of the fine arts as well as those many STEM programs. We could have a great curriculum, but if we didn't have great, great teachers, um, we, that's what we would have was a great curriculum with and so we do really, we're very picky about our teachers. We spend a lot of time as we recruit and qualify teachers. Um, to become a teacher at basis is not an easy uh, process. Um, you have to go through interviews. You have to demonstrate, literally demonstrate in classrooms full of kids um, that you can teach. And, um, and then we give them a lot of professional development and teaching the basis way. In the primaries through third grade, we have two teachers in the classroom. 
And whereas this is an expensive proposition, it is also a very successful proposition. Having the two teachers that can co-teach in the classroom allows us to uh, spread the wealth and spread the work um, and really, really benefit the kids. So in grades one, two, and three, we have a teacher that's called the learning expert teacher. And then we also have a teacher that is, we call the subject expert teacher. The learning expert teachers are focused on pedagogy and the subject expert teachers are focused on content. Um, our teachers are very collaborative and very supportive and very mission driven with our students. Another hallmark of BASIS is our student support. Um, we want all children to be able to succeed at their level. So we do a whole variety of things. And in fact, in uh, all of our schools, we have a position that's called the Director of Student Affairs that is responsible for making sure that that happens, um, that the students are getting whatever kind of support that they need. In addition, our teachers do office hours every week. We have great peer tutoring programs. And we teach our kids how to be organized and accountable for their old, own education. Um, and then the culture. The culture, as I said, is about accountability and responsibility, um, respect and in integrity. Um, we want kids to persevere. Not every class is going to be a breeze for them, um, but we give them the skills that they need to really be a part of that learning community. And in that learning community, we include the parents, um, the teachers, and the students. So given all that, how does BASIS perform? So um, the, the media of the world and the, and the rankers of the world only rank high schools. Um, they have not begun yet to um, as completely to rank uh, primary and middle schools. But as you can see here, with, just with about 10 of our schools um, that have been around for a while, able to, uh, having been um, around long enough to have the number of graduates and um, the enough uh, time and position uh, to be ranked. And we, t we love to see the US News and World Report um, ranking of America's best high schools. And you can see that many of our schools are in the top five or the top 10 of those national rankings. And then when you get down to the local level of, of high schools, again, we are very, very much in the high numbers. Um, our schools flip in and out of that top 10 uh, on a yearly basis. Um, each class has its own personality. But the schools that you see here um, have been around with us for a while, except for Chavano. Um, last year was Chavano's first year to be, um, that's in uh, San Antonio, the first year that they could be ranked. And they came in just great. So um, some, some great information there, just kind of to toot our horn that not only do we recognize that basis is about excellence, but the world recognizes it also. So let's talk about what we do. Um, and we'll start with uh, grades K-4, um, which is where uh, Austin Primary is this year. Next year, it will become a K-2. It's really all about building the foundations and making connections. You think about your kindergartners, um, they've got to come in, they've got to learn, you know, their math facts, they've got to learn how to read, and, um, and all of those things are really about building foundation for them and making the connections between all the subjects that they, they take that help them to understand better. In grades five through seven, we're about mastering success skills as well as um, deep content knowledge. So um, if you think about success skills, about grades four, uh, maybe more five, we really start focusing on how to take notes, how to annotate what they're reading, 
um, really delving into the content knowledge that we built the foundations for in K-4. And then finally, in grades eight through 12, we're about maximizing college readiness. So let's talk about kinder. And nothing will make you happier than to see a kinder class in, in action. They are just amazing. Um, I popped, they invited me into a class yesterday virtually where the kinders um, had used whatever they could have, whatever they could find in their uh, homes to make uh, snow people. And some of them were so creative and so cute and the kids were in their jackets and hats in their home playing in this imaginary snow. Um, and that just puts a smile on your face. In kindergarten, we have two teachers in the classroom, a kindergarten lead teacher and a kindergarten teaching fellow. Um, they both teach, they co-teach. It is a self-contained classroom, uh, meaning that for the most part, the kindergartners stay in one classroom. Um, in, in some schools and in um, when we're really in school and not virtual, um, they might uh, travel to their specials, to the engineering room, the art music room, those kinds of things. Core academics for the kindergartners is a math class that they have every day, a civics history and science class that they have every day, and language and literacy. Again, with our kindergartners, being a public charter school with um, no true enrollment criteria, we get kindergartners who have never been to school, uh, up to kindergartners who are reading at a uh, in a chapter book or at a higher level. And by the end of kindergarten, we have all of our students reading at minimum at a first grade level. Enrichment is time that we set aside each day for the teachers to decide what needs to be done. Maybe they introduced a math concept that morning and could clearly see that the kiddos uh, maybe didn't get that math concept and they use that enrichment time to try it a different way, to reteach it, to teach it as a game. Um, so they use that, they plan and use that enrichment time every day. And then um, they have their specials a couple of times a week for short periods. They have engineering, visual arts, music, performing arts, Mandarin and uh, physical education. In grades one through three, again, we have this co-teaching model with the learning expert teacher and the subject expert teacher. Why that is important is that it um, helps to facilitate that transition from foundational skills to the independent thinking and active learning, critical thinking, starting in the first grade. The other thing that is important about that is that starting in first grade, our students travel to their content teachers when we are in school. But even virtually, they will have seven or eight different teachers depending on the day. And those teachers pop into their virtual classroom and teach the lesson. So our first and third graders have a different teacher for math and science, a different teacher for humanities, a different teacher for literacy and the rest of the classes that you see there. And when we are in-person school, they travel to those classrooms. Those classes are 85 minutes long. Um, and then they have a passing period of about five minutes. And we do this to help them prepare for middle school and high school, as well as to teach them the organization and responsibility that they need. So between classes, they go to their cubby and get their materials for their next class, line up and head to that class. <clears throat> Excuse me, in fourth grade, this is where we start to um, have the children become independent. So they do not have a learning expert teacher. Um, and this is the first of the two, uh, what we call bridge years. So they learn to navigate between their classes independently and they have more classes. 
So in one through three, we combine math and science. We combine into the humanities, history, uh, and the language arts. And we do that with 85 minute classes. In, starting in fourth grade, their classes are 50 minutes. The pace is much faster, but we break apart those subjects. So they have one class in math, they have another class in science, et cetera. They also have all of those specials um, that the uh, younger children also have, um, and, but they are learning really how to become independent, how to have good study habits, and how to be organized. Um, <clears throat> not only do we teach the uh, academics in the primary school, but we also feel it's very, very important to teach the foundational skills. So we teach kids about accountability. Um, you will not get the homework sent to you via um, email uh, even now. Um, we, we, uh, the kids know how to log in and find their homework. Um, we teach organization. So the kids get uh, what we call a CJ, a communication journal at the beginning of the year. And we teach them how to write down their, what's coming, what they need to remember. Um, and this is a, a pretty sacred document at basis. Um, the kids carry it with them wherever they go and they really learn how to use it. And it helps them with, with time management. We're very big on our students graduating with critical thinking, creative thinking, and problem solving skills. That's one of the reasons why we have the engineering class up, till, uh, up through fourth grade, where we really teach them how to think about a, an issue or a problem and come up with solutions. And we're very big on communication and collaboration. So you will find in classes, kids working in teams, um, learning how to do that, as well as making a lot of presentations um, so that they learn how, how to communicate. But it's not all academics. Um, of course, we have recess. Um, and depending on the grade is how many recess we will have. Um, the kids have PE almost every day. Um, and then in those longer classes, especially, but also in the 50 minute classes, the teachers can get a pulse of the classroom and know that it's time for the kids to kind of get their wiggles out. So they'll call a brain break and they'll do everything from, um, you know, get up and dance, do some calisthenics, um, run around the room, whatever it is that will get the kids energized and, and uh, ready to move on with the lesson. And then after school, we uh, offer a wide variety of extracurricular clubs. And that changes with every campus because we typically use our teachers to advise those clubs. So um, it's interesting you know, where their passions are. Um, I, I always love it when we start doing the extracurriculars and I find out that my English teacher is really an artist and wants to do an art club. Um, coding is a very popular club that we have at Basis uh, Austin Primary. Um, we also have kids learning to dance um, and we have kids doing a lot of book clubs. Uh, one that's focused on authors, for instance, and another one that is focused on deeper dives into those ever present magic school bus uh, books. So it can be a variety of things. <clears throat> in middle and high school, let's look at that. So um, again, grades five through seven are kind of our bridge years. Um, we're, we're teaching kind of AP prep curriculum, getting the kids um, to understand the depth and rigor of, of those kinds of programs. And we build upon those fundamentals they learned in the primary school at an accelerated pace. And then our high school, which goes from grades eight through 12, um, we have some classes that you wouldn't maybe necessarily see in high school. But our kids uh, in eighth grade, for instance, take a high school economics class. 
um, our kids in seventh grade are taking algebra two and geometry. I remember I did not take those and of course did not do very well in them in 10th grade. So uh, most of our students meet um, state graduation requirements by the end of 11th grade, but we have an, a tremendous um, senior project opportunity, capstone classes in grade 12, so they tend to stick around. Let's look at grade five. So <clears throat> again, uh, grade five is the second of our two bridge years. Um, we are very much trying to give the kids um, a strong foundation in literacy and history. In math, they'll get introduction to uh, pre-algebra. And then um, they will take, the, our fifth graders take two science classes a day. Um, the first is kind of an introduction to biology, chemistry, physics, and astronomy. And the second is actually called physical geography and focuses on um, those geographic skills that they will need. Um, in fifth grade, history becomes classics, looking at ancient Rome and Greek, um, because they're also taking Latin in fifth grade. Up through fourth grade, our students take Mandarin. That's required of all students. And then in fifth and sixth grade, they take Latin. Then um, the specials, um, all the performing arts, visual arts, and, and all of those um, continue to happen in fifth grade. Starting in sixth grade, our students get, um, get their mastery check through com comprehensive exams. We do what we call pre-comps in January, and then they must pass the comprehensive uh, exams. Think of them as very heavy finals uh, at the end of the year. And they will take um, two of those. They'll take one that is um, uh, the same across all of bases, and then their teacher will um, also have one that we call the native that um, goes toward the curriculum that that teacher taught in that class that may have been different. Our sixth and seventh graders, and in fact, our sixth, seventh, and eighth graders all take biology, chemistry, and physics. Uh, within the same year, so they take three days of each. Um, they continue Latin in sixth grade, and then they get a choice of foreign language starting in seventh grade. Many of our kids will stick with Latin or go back to Mandarin or pick up French or Spanish. And if we have teachers um, in the, uh, on the faculty that can teach other languages, we will offer those also. Grades 8 through 12 are all about um, getting the kids ready and demonstrating that mastery of our very rigorous curriculum. Um, it's AP based. We have a um, kids have to take so many APs and they have to pass so many AP tests. And then our senior program first semester is on capstone courses, uh, deep research into a subject that um, the kids are very interesting in. Um, and then the second semester, they do their senior project, their senior research project um, with both outside uh, internships, mentorships, as well as inside. And I can tell you without a doubt that some of the projects that our kiddos do, I don't even know what they mean. Um, they are so advanced. Uh, many of our seniors have gotten job offers that um, to come to work for big companies when they finish their college years because of the work that they have done in their senior project. Um, we take college counseling very um, seriously. It starts in ninth grade and gets progressively more intense up through um, and then gets very intense starting in 11th and 12th grade. We have college counselors on our uh, campuses and the seniors take two college counseling seminars a day. And what they're working on is college life, um, how to fill out their applications, where to apply, how to write their um, essays that they have to write, how to get the recommendations from teachers. And we get visited 
by most of the elite, if not all of the elite colleges in the country. We don't have to go out and recruit colleges to come to us. They come to us um, because they know basis. AP courses, as I said, those are, if you're not familiar, they are college level coursework. And uh, depending on the college, they can get college credit for it. And our kids um, uh, begin taking them in grade nine and have to complete at least six courses uh, prior to graduation. So um, they've got a really good foundation and if they score well enough on their AP exams, and many of our kids will take 10, 12 AP exams. Um, we pay for them, which is also a, a benefit to, to parents, um, and they get that college credit. So many of our students go into college you know, as sophomores or juniors because of the number of classes that they are getting credit for. Um, <clears throat> again, in grades eight through 12, that's where we really get into um, electives so that the kids have to take their AP classes, but they also have a wide variety of electives that they can take. Um, you see just a few of them here. Again, every campus is, is different in what they offer in their electives, um, but a lot of times the kids will ask for a course in um, and our uh, curriculum department and our teachers will put it together as an elective. Um, we just talked about this, the capstone courses, the college counseling and the senior projects, all leading to a basis diploma with honors, high honors, those kinds of things. Okay. Oh, here's, um, sorry. Here's some examples of the kinds of projects that our students did um, this year uh, in college. The effect of neuroprotective glycopeptides in rodent models of Parkinson's disease. Um, these are high school seniors, okay? Um, Alternative CAP possibilities for the process of cryopreservation. Uh, building a self-diving vehicle. These are things that the kids are doing with internal and external mentors. Um, and then they, uh, they blog about it on a weekly basis. And then they do a presentation at the end of the year, which the public is invited to in their area. I love this number also. So in tw the class of 2020, and um, as you all know, all of these kids missed their the high school graduation, although each one of our campuses did some kind of um, safe graduation for them. Um, it was a rite of passage that they very, very much um, did not get. But our class of 2020 across all basis schools earned over almost $79 million in merit scholarships. These are, this is not um, uh, financial aid. These are merit scholarships, $79 million. And you can see in that list there that they, are, they have been accepted to some very, very, very good colleges. Okay. So if we whet your appetite, um, please um, be sure to submit your, op your application during open enrollment. It is going on now through December 15th. Um, and you can do that at enroll basis. Remember, if you are looking at K-2, you want to apply to basis Austin primary. If you are looking at grades three through seven, you want to apply to basis Austin. The, the system won't let you make a mistake, um, but just be careful as you are doing that. Um, my email address is there um, and please take note of it. And you can email me and say, I'd like to have a phone conversation. I have more, more questions. And then um, 
Alexa Robinson is our Basis Austin primary registrar, and we've just named um, Michelle Narvez as our Basis Austin, but they're working interchangeably right now. So uh, either one of them can help you. And then Ron, we do have a couple of questions in the chat box. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and come to your questions. Perfect. So the first one is about the sibling lottery. Okay. Um, we love siblings. Um, and my sibling priority, I should have said. Yeah. Sorry. Got it. In my uh, on my campus right now, I've got you know like families of four. So um, yes, once one sibling um, is admitted, the others uh, almost I hesitate to say automatically get in. Um, but they do automatically get in. Let me see if I can see the chat. Okay. Yep. Okay, now I can pick up on some of these questions. I can see the chat now. Um, what are the school hours? Um, <laughs> I wish I could answer that for you. Um, they kind of change every year. And um, particularly if you're looking at Basis Austin, we have not started to put schedules together for that. What I can tell you is that our school day is probably a little bit longer than what you're used to. Um, we, this year, our uh, kindergartners start at um, 7.45 and get out at 3.30. Um, and the other grades are about that same kind of time. So we will always send you out the, the school hours in, um, in the summertime. We do have um, what we call early bird, which means that we open the campus at 7 a.m. Um, there's no fee for that. The kids uh, will be supervised, but uh, it is unstructured. So many of the children will come eat their breakfast on the playground, play with friends, that kind of thing until their, their um, class starts. Um, and then we also have an after school program that is called Late Bird. It is fee-based and it goes to six o'clock. And during Late Bird, the kids um, work with their teachers or teachers, I shouldn't say their teachers, but with teachers to uh, make sure they get some of their homework done as well as have time to socialize and have fun. In addition, we have the extracurriculars. So um, if a kid starts at fifth grade, can, will she be able to adjust with your curriculum? Um, we used to start our schools at fifth grade. Um, we have been, uh, we've had charter schools for almost 22 years. However, our primary schools are only seven years old. So we used to always start our schools at fifth grade. And so we do a lot in that fifth grade year to help students adjust to the rigor and the routine and procedures of um, our fifth grade. So that's not a problem. We, we do a lot of things for kids coming into any grade, um, but um, the, the new students that come into every, any grade because we understand that we are different uh, from the schools that they're coming from, and we wanna make sure that they feel loved and that they feel like they can be successful. So yes, she will be able to adjust. Minimum age for kinder in, in um, Texas, I had to think about where I was for a minute. If minimum age for, for kinder in Texas is they have to be five by September 1. Um, so if your child is not five by September 1, um, you have to hold for a year, okay? Um, some states have early admission of kindergarten, Texas does not. Um, we, <laughs> I love this question, we get this question every info session we do. Well, we put Cedar Park, Round Rock, Leander. So we are very, very aware that those communities would love to have a basis. Um, we are looking in those communities, but we don't have anything to share with you at this point about timing. 
Um, so um, right now at uh, Basis Austin Primary, probably half of my population is from Cedar Park, Leander, and Round Rock. Um, so one of the one of the beauties of that, I realize that it's a it's a trek, um, but our parents are getting when school to normal. Um, our parents already our parent booster organization already has plans for um, carpooling. So um, yes, in the future, sometime we may have a school uh, in one of those communities. It's we are looking, um, but there's nothing to report at this time. I would just be very interested in what grade you are all interested in. If you could just plop it into the um, chat, that would be um, that would be helpful. Fifth grade, kindergarten. Okay. A lot of fifth graders. Okay, that's that is great. Um, Fifth grade at um, Basis Austin, we think will have will be our uh, one of our highest populations. So our obviously our this year's fourth graders will go in um, and and become that oh, twins. We seem to have a lot of twins at, at Basis. Um, I think I have four sets of twins at Basis Austin Primary. Um, so we'll welcome your twins into fifth grade. And we'll talk to you about whether they're in the same section or not. Um, and then I see a two and a four and a three and a six. OK, so all across all across the board um, this year, third grade was our highest populated grade. Um, and those kids are, are doing very, very well. Wonderful fifth grader in 2022 and a kinder in 2023. Glad you're getting an early start, Shah. And we we have parents to do that. So again, you know, we'll have the two campus. Well, do you think there will be enough seats for new fifth graders? Yes, I do. Um, we are looking at um, four sections of um, fifth grade, um, which is will give us plenty of seats. Again, remember that's where we used to start our our classes. So that's how we build. Um, to the middle school and the high school. Um, there will be three sections for third grade. Fun thing that you may not be aware of, we um, title each one of our um, class sections by, we name it after an element on the periodic table. So when your kids join basis, they will be into chlorine or neon or radium or bromine. Um, and that's it's a great way to build some community amongst the kids, as well as some competition amongst them. Um, and they really enjoy learning about the periodic table and their element. There are not uniforms for kids. We believe that kids are unique. And they should dress the way that they want to dress as long as it's appropriate for school. Um, and so um, T-shirts, jeans, uh, the only thing that we discourage is flip flops um, just because they're they are outside. And um, if they want to wear hats, if they and we have lots of um, spirit weeks where they get to dress up into costume. So um, yes, we want the kids to be individuals. How much time do they get for lunch? I mean, it varies a little bit by grade, but not much. It's about 30 minutes. Um, and the kids, what we do particularly in the primary is we've had to um, put some procedures in place, for instance, because the, the babies would much rather socialize than eat that wonderful lunch that you uh, packed for them because we don't have a hot lunch program. So they will have to bring their lunch. So um, the food for five is um, what we call it at Basis Austin Primary. And for the first five minutes of lunch, it is silent and they are eating. Once that five minutes is up, they continue eating, but they can socialize with their friends. Um, we currently feed into Leander. Yes, 
Leander, you are very much. Um, yes. Oh, yes. Laura, do you see that? Uh, website doesn't list Leander. Yes, you are eligible to be enrolled in basis. Not a problem. Um, that was a big deal for us this year. Um, we got Leander late, but it is definitely uh, one of the eligible ISDs. Um, yes, we will add a at least a, probably a grade a year until we have all the way up to 12th grade. And the goal is really to have perhaps, um, don't hold us to this, but this is what we're thinking right now, three K-12s in Austin. So we will build, that's the, that's the way we start. We may start as we did this year with K-4. Now we're gonna add uh, possibly up to seven. Um, and then the following year we'll add eight um, and keep going till we have a full high school. So your kids that come to us now will graduate from basis. Any other questions I can answer for you? Again, I'm gonna put my email uh, in the chat. I really invite you to contact me if I can type. Um, do we have a playground on the new campus? The new campus um, is beautiful and has lots of outdoor space. Um, we have limited outdoor space at um, Basis Austin, but we make it work. And um, I think um, I was just blown away with the beautiful tree-lined tree campus that we have, our new campus, with lots and lots of outdoor space. Um, lottery results are, will be, the lottery will run January 12th and um, we will start offering seats right at that point. You will get an email that says, congratulations, we're offering you a seat at um, Basis Austin or Basis Austin Primary. And it will tell you um, what you need to do and how much time you have to do it. I um, mean, we, we're pretty strict on those times because Obviously, we have a lot of people who have applied and we want to um, let them know as soon as possible. Um, class students to teacher ratio from fifth grade. So st starting in fifth grade, um, we our average class is about 32. Some classes are much smaller than that, but we rarely go bigger than that. Um, so um, the kids are very well taken care of with one teacher in the classroom um, starting in fourth grade um, and on average about 30 kids. And again, our teachers do office hours. Um, many we require of an hour a week, but many of our teachers do more. Um, and we very much teach our children how to self-advocate if they need help. Anything else? I hope you all have turned in your applications, although you have until December 15th. It does not make a difference whether you did it at midnight on October 29th or if you just so long as you do it before on or before December 15th. Um, we'll scrub the data, the lottery. Um, it's computer generated, so we don't touch it. Um, will run, as I said, January uh, 12th, and then we'll let you know. What is our homework policy? We love homework. However, um, we are very, very, um, very, what's the word I want? Um, cognizant that we don't want to do homework as busy work. Homework is always practice for what the students learned, um, and so it has meaning. And we very much ask, particularly in the primary, it's less prevalent in the middle and high, but in the primary, parents love to help their children with their homework. And the reason that we do homework in the primary, particularly, we start in kindergarten with, with homework. 
um, probably about 15 or 20 minutes of homework um, a day for the kinders. Um, and then it goes up about 15 minutes from, from that. Um, is to let the teachers know, did what they taught sink in? So for instance, they'll teach a math concept and um, in, uh, up until third grade, the kids will probably do 15 um, uh, examples of that as their homework. Students are graded A to F in their core academics and we have tests as often as we need to have tests. So in math, it's probably every five lessons, five or 10 lessons. And um, with the other subjects, it's at the end of a unit. So our, their core academics, the ones that um, uh, favor into their um, grade point average are, are graded A to F. And then like their specials are graded um, satisfactory passing needs improvement um, or failing. So we have tests. Um, we also do a lot of benchmark testing. Um, so the kids will take multiple, particularly in third and fourth grade, they will take um, multiple uh, benchmark tests a, a year. And then starting in sixth, seventh and eighth, again, as I said, they have the comprehensives. Um, not only is it okay for kids to bring their own lunch, that's the only option we have. So kids have to bring their lunch. Um, again, when we are um, back in school normally, our booster organization will um, provide uh, parents with a way to order lunch and then the boosters come, come in to um, uh, serve those lunches. Mostly it's you know pizza, Chick-fil-A, things like that, but we do that on all of our campuses. So you'll get information about how you can order uh, those lunches, but other than that, our kids bring their own lunch and there are no facilities for microwaving or um, uh, refrigeration. So look on Amazon and get those great um, lunch boxes that keep things warm or cold for up to five hours. So will there be any special follow-up classes if the kids are not up to the grade? Yes. So all of our kids have to pass their grade, uh, their classes with a 60 or above. If they do not, they will have an opportunity to do what we call a summer packet. And the summer packet is prepared by the teacher and covers the entire year. They do the summer packet um, in the summer, obviously, um, may take a test on that, and that will determine whether they can matriculate to the next grade. Um, so yes, that is one of the follow-ups, but we watch grades like a hawk and any kids that in on my campus this year, any kids who are at a 70 or below, we dig into it and we put those kids on um, academic uh, intervention. So they're getting extra help to make sure that they do. We do not offer bus transportation. Um, again, we're a charter school. Um, we are not funded at the same level as the uh, traditional public schools. So we pour our dollars into what's happening in the classroom, um, making sure the kids have um, the supplies they need, the teachers have what they need, and we do not offer bus transportation. Do the kids take the STAR test? Yes, that's required by um, state law, and our kids do very, very well on the STAR test. You are very welcome. Anything else? Okay, it's just about seven o'clock. So again, please make sure, I see somebody's typing, yeah, okay. Make sure that you have my email address. Um, it's in this chat and you can come back to this chat. Um, and please don't hesitate to uh, reach out to me about anything um, that you may have forgotten to ask or um, that you want to know more about. I, I am more than happy to talk to you. As I said in February, I'll, I will um, celebrate eight years at BASIS. I believe in what we do. I, am, um, I can't think of anything that I would rather do um, than be at BASIS. So I hope you will feel the same way also. 
And um, I look forward to meeting all of you.